immutable operating systems. You can't tinker with them, right? Well, wrong. Of course you can. And I'm gonna take Fedora Silverblue images by Ublue team and show you how. My name is Primoz aka Bigbot. Let's begin, shall we? To make an image for Silverblue with Ublue images, you don't need to really don't need much. There are three ways of making it. Today I'm gonna show you a way of what they call basing. You base upon a different image using OCI build method. There's also a way of forking a already established repository. This is especially useful for something like Bazite, um, Bluefin. Even though you can also use method of basing on an image. Or you can use starting point repo, which is a repo in the UBLUS organization on GitHub, which provides a convenience abstraction to the whole build process. So as I said, today we're going to be checking out the method of basic upon an image. So as you see, I already have a browser open, a browser. I always keep saying browser. This is a text editor, VS Code, to be specific, you can use any text editor you want. All we need is a single file for the most basic stuff in a single file called container file, or we can have it whatever we want actually. But let's stay stick with convention, container file. So we're using an OCI bit build method, which means we're using standard OCI conventions. Some, some refer to them as Docker conventions, like Docker files. So if you know any uh, Docker, how to make a Docker image, this will be completely easy for you, but, but otherwise don't fear, it's not actually that hard. I'm gonna show you most basic parts about it. So to, to start, we need a from statement for an image we're gonna be picking. Let's check out the list of images we have available. So we have a page for these images here. So these are seven images we have available right now for a complete main, but there are more. If we go into UBLUS here and click packages, we get to get more. Not all of these are for uh, desktop. We have our supporting images as well. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I'm a part of UBLUE team as well, so. Yeah, so, so, but which we're gonna be checking out now are these images we showed before. Kinoite main, zero blue main, base, for those who want a completely clean image. So no desktop available yet, so you have to install your own. Voxite, Mate, LXQT, Sirisia. So we're gonna be starting with a simple silver blue main. Or shall we start with a bit something a bit different? Kinoid perhaps. Okay. So as we can see, this this URL is what we need. I'm gonna just move. So first we need to define the image we're basing upon. So do we do that with from? And then we go with ghcr.io slash ublue os slash now we put a name of our image which in our case right now is kinoite main and with colon we define a tag tag is basically a version latest is the most latest version is or the version of the image that is tagged with latest which normally is the most latest version we and in our case that is correct we, we always tag the most latest version with latest. Then if you want to run commands, we do run. For example, run rpm dash os3 install. Let me think about it. 
some program you want to have on your system. Like, let's add a terminal. This would have uh, uh, KDE's console, but what if we wanted to add, I don't know, GNOME Terminal. This would install GNOME Terminal. Now you're probably thinking, this is pretty easy, but what if I wanted to change configurations? The easiest way would be to just copy them in. Let's create our root file, root file system here. Let's call it root fs. And let's inside root fs add etsy for etc. Why did I do file? Yes, I don't have it here. We put etsy or etc directory and we let's say wanted to have a different OS release file. I'm gonna just simply uh, just, I'm going to simply pull uh, OS release file from my system, just so we know what we're talking about. This would be this. And let's change it. Let's name it instead of Bluffy here, which is... Uh, which is a version of an image I use for myself. Let's name it something different. What about BigPod SB dash Vida? Let's go without dash for fun. This is the name. And for now, it will work. Actually, that's actually not needed. Let's let's name a different thing because I believe this will be changed. Let's go with variant. Let's change variant ID to BigPot SP Vida. And dash Vida. And Variant ID. Why I'm doing this because I believe this gets changed automatically, but this doesn't. We can also change version here to be this one. And let's let's just we need to do something else. We need to copy it in. So simple. Copy. Root fs slash star so if everything inside rootfs directory is copied to slash now we may think this will clobber anything yeah this will clobber inside etsy directory os release nothing else it doesn't need the dash, dash f flag because it's not actually copying actually excluding a copy command it's doing a copy from outside the container into inside of container now we're gonna just run it shall we so the the most easy way for testing is to do podman build dot. This will try and pull the Kinoite main, imi ma main image and this may take a minute. So through the magic of video editing, I'll be right back. Download complete, now it will build the image. After the download, it waits a few seconds sometimes. There we go. It is running GNOME Terminal. RPM install GNOME Terminal. Run basically says to the shell inside the, the build container, run this command. It's Fedora updating mail takes a while always. 
and I have to fill in this dead space somehow. There we go. It's installed in GNOME Terminal, VTE Profiles and some other things. This does some warnings. This is from my uh, my side of things because, well, there are some sockets in there it doesn't like, apparently. Yay. No such file directory. Oh. Yeah. If you're gonna be typing in things, you probably should type in correctly. Root F. S, not root F. We're gonna rerun the command and it's gonna see it's gonna cache certain things like the download the image and our run OS3 command. And it did it. Now what you need to do next is upload this image to our registry, registry or a OCI registry. You do that with Podman push. But because we haven't yet given it a name, we have to first podman tag. Or when you build, you do dash T and you can tag it in line. The, we need to add it, its um, SHA value. So this is a unique identifier for each image. This is a final file images uh, share value and you can actually not, you don't have to write the whole thing even one character will be enough if that's the only image that has eight in it at the first place but i normally go with five six seven characters that way almost never get get a wrong image and they don't do a name for example for we can use GHCR, GHCR.io slash BigPod98 for me slash BigPod SP dash Vida colon latest. Now, Podman push. And it's gonna ask for authentication. Let me be right back when I authenticate. Okay, I authenticated. To authenticate, you use Podman login command and you specify the, uh, what is called, a registry you're using. And then you have to enter your username and password or some sort of access token and you're in. Now, let's do the this is, this is the command I used. Let's try pushing now. Here we go. Since there already are layers of this image on their server, they're gonna actually cache them and not use your layers. So now what are layers? Layers are basically each, each, um, say this, each one of these lines is a separate layer. So does this image have a bunch of layers? Something like 60 probably. So each time you execute a new command or you copy something, each time you change the file system of the image, you add a new layer, which two, three of our layers just got uploaded. Three, three. So let's check it out on GitHub. Let's open up our packages. I'm gonna just quickly find it. I have many images. And this one is apparently set as private currently. That is because it was just created. Let me fix that before I show you. Here we go. This is our repo. So this is our page for our registry on GHCR, on GitHub. 
So we have our latest image. Now, if we actually went and ran this using RPM OS3 rebase command, we would get our desktop. We're gonna do it in a, in a second. Now let's check out how to automatically build our images. And then we're gonna do a bit more of customizations, right? Right. So you may want to automate your building process of images. These are the things that are already done on something like fork method or using starting point, mainly because they're already done by someone else. Here you're in full control. For example, if I want to remove something that was previously in the image, just do RPM or three remove before run. Or actually, no, you have to override it, override remove. So something like this, run. RPM OS3 override remove let's say console we do not like console with a K we remove it this way and let's rerun our and let's this time tag it with ghcr.io slash bigpod98 slash bigpod sp dash vidal or latest and it's gonna build and nope it's not remove override uh what did i do wrong i forgot a single r learn to type big bot that helps oh couldn't dep resolve that solve transaction what problem detected conflicting requests that means there is some dependency that requires console with a K, bummer. But there are certain certain stuff you can remove. So we could, when we get in our image, see what requires console. Or Fedora packages. Fedora packages is your friend here. You can learn whichever package you need or the name of it, so let's check console. Oh yeah, I probably should show you. Maybe the name, we did the name wrong, console five. Let's try console five of console. Sometimes a bit of a try and an error. So, Plasma DRK on QI requires console 5. Let's check out what that is. Come on. Tabbing around. And this is it. Dr. Conky. Crash Handler. Huh. Maybe we can remove both. There's a bit of trial and error with this stuff. We're moving two packages. There we go. We removed two packages. It works. Then, if we now push this image, we wouldn't have Plasma and Console. But let's do something different. Let's commit our stuff. This would be add star git commit add that uh, rootfs and container file git push. I'll be right back after I log in. Here we go, logged in, and I, just to check it out, let's see if everything was pushed, and it was. Everything is pushed we can check out our repository here. You will, uh, I will have a link for this repository down in the comment section or in the description section down below. What you want to now add are actions. This will allow us to automatically build our uh, repository and therefore our image. Let's add an action. If you're using uh, 
something like GitLab, it has its own CI system you can use. Let's set up a workflow ourselves, main.yaml, and I'm, I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm going to actually use a separate image to, separate base to already pull the content, so we can find it in big pod SB alpha. It is a bit more involved, so we're gonna carry down. Here we go. This has a cron job. So let's, let's explain this thing here. First, I'm gonna remove this part. This is something I need for my image. I think we don't need it right now, but we're gonna keep it because we might want to. And I'm gonna explain why. So we also, we have a cron, so on this is when images are built on schedule with a cron job, yada, 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 cron job at 22.40 every day on push, so on push of branch main, but ignore these specific paths. And on work from dispatches is when you when you can in UI click build. This is um, not needed right now. What we have are here are jobs. Jobs are actually what we build with what we build. So we have our where where our build job runs. That's on a basically on a virtual machine running Ubuntu. We have our matrix strategy. So matrix strategy is basically, you can take a single set of instructions, instructions, extractions, instructions, and do multiple builds with them with different um, rules on them. So these rules are more different variables are, are defined in matrix with fail fast false being that if one of the builds fails, nothing else fails. If you have to set to true, if one of them fails, everything fails. <laughs> Which is good if you're testing, but if you're trying to get updates in, maybe not. So here we have two variables for our matrix, image flavor, whether it be main or NVIDIA, and a major version. For what I use, that's enough because I use Bluefin to base my image. But you could also here have, for example, base, not base, but base, where you could have Inoite, Silver Blue, and you could build many images based on a single container file. We're gonna talk how to get that to work soon. Before that, you remember I was deleting some build arcs. That's what will get, what will be important. So first, then we have steps, which steps are basically what steps you take during the action build, basically build process. We check out the code from repository. We build it, build using bash shell. We run this command. Then we do a tag process. So tag is a podman tag command. I name it build output so it's easy then to just re-tag with exactly what they want. And then we have a login login where we log into ghcr.io. Username and use a GitHub token as a secret or secret of GitHub token. And then we, we do a push with our image name with matrix values. You can also see here, we're using the same matrix values. Let's now add one or two build arcs. What are build arcs? I'm gonna pop this out so I have everything right on screen. Build arcs are basically arguments you can pass into the build process of Podman build to tell it some inf additional information and maybe parameterize or argumentize certain things. For example, build arc. We maybe want to make an image flavor arc so we can build both main and NVIDIA images. Let's say image 
image flavor and then we do equals and we're gonna do to this matrix image core flavor we also may want to have multiple versions of images building so let's do another one dash dash build arc version equals we're gonna just copy paste because we're programmers and we tend to copy paste a lot because why not so what this means is that this code will run two different versions of currently two different sets of build processes going through the whole this and it will pass in for example in the main process what's it called in image flamer main process it will pass here main 38 here over here and the nvidia will pass here nvidia and here again 38. now we're going to commit these changes we we're going to use this and then we're going to also have to do a couple of changes to our container file and here i'm going to show you any trick in github press the period key or dot however you want to call it on your keyboard this will open up a git github.dev page which is bright as hell okay dark mode Oof. i almost thought it's gonna be too bright sorry if it was too bright i didn't expect it to get that bright so we're gonna open up our container file and we're gonna do a simple change right here instead of ghcr.io you blue eyes skin white main we're gonna do colon latest we're gonna colon version no colon colon um dollar sign version and here we're gonna do colon or uh, dash dollar sign uh image flavor we have to define them what is this telling us something oh the different the changes now we also have to do when we do this this type of changes we have to define an arc <clears throat> right here so we're gonna do arc image flavor and arc version now if we wanted to let's say for example have another arc for um, image type or image for example if you want or base image let's call it if you want to let's say instead of kinoite have silver blue or kinoite silver blue and maybe be um voxite or maybe we wanted to build on top of something else like bazite or bluefin as well so we would do we would do on our matrix as a base base image kinoite bluefin it would do that but we have to be very careful here because if you do not have those packages inside the image you're gonna basically you're gonna break the process so we would need to have some either some if statements to check if they are there or something like that but that's that's an advanced use case let's not do it for now <clears throat> So you can also run different R commands like I don't know enable Podman enable systems CTL services system system these services like using system CTL command or any other command really whichever one you want. At the end before you after you finish this uh, why it's not necessary currently it is good to run OS3 container commit this is currently not necessary but it will will likely be in future now what if you want to add few more images right something like cockpit cockpit is a management software let's 
add a full suite of Kotlin applications. I have a list right over here, so I can just pass it in. All this works, but what if you wanna add an image that isn't, or a, a package that isn't in the main Fedora repositories or RPM Fusion repository, which are currently enabled? Well, since we already have our rootfs etsy directory, let's create one for yum dot repos dot p. Here we can pass our repos files, like for I don't know whichever repository you want. What so example VS Code repo or whichever third-party repository, uh, DNF repository there exists, you can use and put in here and it will get copied into it. The reason we put it, we put it into a special, special separate directory, all of this DSC. So what if we wanted, let's say, uh, user, USR, everything inside the user directory will also get copied into, into a user directory. Now you, you, you shouldn't be editing things in uh, user local, because that is local and um, OS3 freaks out during the build. Same with var and temp. Future big put here. Um, slight correction here. You should be using slash TMP directory for temporary storage during build but you should also clean it up right afterwards because it doesn't get cleaned automatically and anything copied into the image, including slash TMP directory will, will be baked into the image. So yeah, you should probably not keep it empty. You should probably keep it empty at the end of the process. Like I'm gonna show you soon. Or Tim doesn't, but it gets copied in. Why would you? So a great thing before ending the build, it's to run rm rf slash var slash temp. I believe that's what I do. No, slash var slash star and slash star here. This will ensure that the, the slash var directory and slash temp directories are empty of all content. Let's type updated container file. Commit and push. And let's check out our report. Let's check out our action. First one failed. Oh no. Two jobs, two matrixes. So as I said, we defined two job, two different jobs in matrix, two of them run. Let's see, here we have a semi regularly updated build block. It will pull and then build. Be right back when the build is done. We'll see what the problem is. We're gonna fix it. Okay, we're back. During the push process, we get an error. We're gonna wait for it to complete the job and let's check out what the problem is. Writing blob, initiating layer upload to slash v2, midpod 98, so on and so on. Denied, installation not allowed to write organization package. This would be because in the settings, there is a setting we need to change. Let's jump to action, general. And under work from permission, we need to add read and write permissions. We just save and rerun the build. Big pot, build big pot and run workflow. This is the workflow dispatch I was talking about. Run workflow. This will allow us as owners of the repository to rerun whenever we need it. And be right back when the build is done because this time it should upload. Then we're gonna check it inside a VM. As we can see, it's, it's installing. So let's put it together. Meanwhile, let's talk about what is Ublu. Ublu is basically a set of images 
set of uh, images for immutable fedora, silver blue kinoite sericea, with batteries included. What are batteries here? Batteries are things like NVIDIA drivers, codecs, other sorts of drivers, or cust very custom versions like Bluefin. But, uh, I lost the name, Bazite. These are the types of images we run, so we make and you want to use. So you can also use, you don't have to base your image upon Kinoite, Bazite, Bluefin. You can also use these images by themselves. And you can use the rebase commands I'm gonna show you right now. So there, there are additional, hmm. We still have permission the night fright package. Hmm. Let me fix that. What did I forget? This should work. Huh. Let me be right back after that traversing section. As you can see, the build already completed. What was wrong? Well, when you create, a, when you push to a GHCR repository, or registry and you didn't push from a project it will create a image there but it will give it minimal access to all actions so what you need to do is grant it specific pro access from the action from this project or this repository that's that's what was the problem one two I gave it the wrong name. Yeah. So now that we have something built and apparently built well, let's just check it out. We have two packages, which means two images on this location, bigpod sp v main, which is new one. So that is not that that fix wasn't actually needed. Oh well. The first one was actually needed. Oh well, but it's good to remember for future. I'm gonna remember that as well. Let's jump into, into our VM and rebase to our new image. I already have a VM waiting for us, so we can just run OS3, rebase, OS3 dash unverified. Registry future big pot here again. One thing I should explain better is as I said, this is OS3 unverified registry. The reason I have to do write that is because this isn't a assigned image, so doesn't have a signature, something like would be created by cosine. I didn't cover how to do signatures in this video. You can check out the uh, video by George Castro on how he does creation of his own images. He also he at one point also includes how to do cosine signing in his video. So I recommend checking it out in the description down below if you want to know more about signing and maybe even sign your own images. This can be used for other images, other OCI docker images as well. Now back to the video. Colon ghcr.io slash pickpot 98 slash pickpot sp dash vida vida dash main colon
uh, English keyboard. I don't have English keyboard, so I have to figure out which letter to press because I forgot to change to to keyboard that would work for me inside the VM. Yay! I'm gonna use latest, which should be there. Let's check out. Wrong one. This is the right one, yeah. Oh no. There is no latest. I forgot to tag it with latest. Oh. Oops. So 38 it is. Good thing I checked out. 3A. And uh rebase. OS3, yeah. RPM OS3. Genius. Now we'll do a poll, so I'll be back when it's downloaded. And here we are. It already loaded up everything we need. A huge ton of packages. Here we go. And ironically, freed a couple of megas of memory. Now we're going to type reboot. And reboot, it will. So... We're gonna wait a bit. That cursor is huge. This is a VM, I'm actually using a UFI VM. Fedora Shim X64.EFI and loading. Here we go. Ooh, it's big. We're gonna change this to um, I see it. A password. KDE. KDE is coming up. <gasps> Here it is. Vocal Plasma. Gonna close this. Next. 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 And next. Let's see what do we have? Simple by default. Powerful when needed. Hmm. Manage software. Yeah, you're gonna away. Uh, zero. Gonna definitely not. Let's see. Hmm. I actually don't have that much in there. So, yeah, back. Next. Get involved. Freedom. And let's, let's see if console is there. Console. No console. Nice. No terminal. There is no known terminal. But it is. Why is that? Well, because... It, uh, the application for it, the, to find it, is a bit finicky and asks for only GNOME desktop, so that would have to be changed. No biggie, that can be easily changed. Open terminal, no terminal. Yep, because there is no console with a K. So, yay. Maybe settings can fix that. Where are settings? System settings. Terminal. Default applications. Terminal emulator. Terminal. Open terminal. Oh, apply. Open terminal. Yay. Oh, we need a better um, team. So, edit preferences. Colors. Let's choose solarized for now. Yeah, it's shoe. Oh. Solar is dark. Close. Yay. Also, I hate light mode. So let's fix that. Uh, but it's dark. Apply. Ah, I feel already feel better. I would also want to change. Uh, this was the used. Uh, 920, 1080. Apply. It already looks better. Yeah. <clears throat> so now we have a terminal. It's GNOME terminal inside 
KDE Plasma. Nice, and it's already installed. So, thank you guys for watching. Again, if you wanna see the other video made by George on how to do another method to make your image called using fork, check it out in the comments, uh, in the description down below. Uh, before we finish, I'm gonna say there, there are drawbacks and benefits to both styles of images or both styles of doing it. This isn't perfect. You have to do more with yourself, but you also get to do it however you like. While with, with forking, there are already other, already certain ideas involved by other people which can make it, which can make it however you like harder, but this makes it easy. While the third method of using starting point is heavily abstracted. So again, abstractions, but however you like, that's up to you. Again, a uh, video for that in the description down below. Uh, accompanying blog post to this will drop in few days after this video. Again, in the description down below. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, leave them in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell to see, to see other things. On, on that note, to see other things, in few days, I'll be, let's make me bigger. So you could be scared more. Uh, in a few days, I'll probably be dropping another video on making your own image, basically using this method, but doing it for a more real life scenario, not just showcasing few things, what you can do, but I'm going to be doing a image, how I would do image for me. I'm going to actually make something, probably something on, based on Kino White or based on I don't know, Mate, maybe, or maybe just something based on base, maybe. No desktop at all, we'll see. But I'll be doing the whole, maybe some modification to the desktop, maybe this, maybe that, maybe a bit of that. You will be able to see that video in a few days. So yeah, don't forget to ring the notification bell and subscribe so you get the notification when that real life scenario video comes to notification boxes on YouTube, to your notification boxes on YouTube and on my channel. Now, thank you guys for watching. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe. I don't know why I'm pointing up, it's down. Uh, comment and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.